Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is our lecture number one. What is genetics, variation, and the brief history of genetics? So, first of all, what is genetics? Basically, genetics is the discipline of biology which deals with the study of genes, heredity, variation in living organisms. A field of biology which deals with the study of genes. Genetics is the field of study of genes heredity and variation what is genes and how these genes are passed out in offspring from parents and how variation emerged between the parents and the offspring this study is known as genetics the term genetics was coined by the batson in 1906 Basically, genetics wild is derived from the geneticals, whose meaning is origin or the creation or the way through which something is formed. Then heredity. What is heredity? Basically, when a trait is passed from mother to uh, mother and father to ancestors or the offspring, is known as heredity. As like mother plus father is equal to offsprings so this is a picture of a boy but his laughing style is like mother so this is the process by which an offspring cell organism acquires the character of its parent cell organisms like the example human produce a human baby and wheat seed produce the wheat plant not the puppies grow and puppies grow into the dog never into the cat this is the very basic examples of heredity like in a human genome in a human like in a female egg and a male sperm will carry information for a human baby not for a cat or a dog babies so through heredity variation exhibited by individual can accumulate cause some specific or some species to evolve like uh, how uh, in further slide i will discuss about the variation so very vari why variation arise basically variation are arise due to the environment changing when we feel that the environment is too much cold the, our next coming generation will adopt to this environment automatically so here is the variation a deviation from the heredity which deals with the differences and the similarities which are exhibited by individuals in the progeny ke ek aise deviations ek aise differences ho individuals mein jo unko aapas mein ek dusre se disseminate kar rahe ho like aap 20 students class ke hain to aap 20 students ki alag alag ek specification hai har student ki shape alag hai har student ka dna alag hai har student के फिंगरप्रिंट्स ला गए एंड दैट्स इज वेरिएशन हाउ दिस वेरिएशन कम्स बेसिकली व्हेन द फर्टिलाइजेशन व्हेन द गैमीट्स फॉर्मेशन टेक प्लेस द क्रॉसिंग ओवर हैपेंस दिस क्रॉसिंग ओवर लीड्स टू वेरिएशंस एंड द ऑफस्प्रिंग्स वेरिएट फ्रॉम इट्स पेरेंट्स फॉर एग्जांपल देयर आर द 6.5 बिलियन पीपल्स व्हिच आर डिफरेंट फ्रॉम ईच अदर लाइक इट्स कॉम्प्लेक्शंस कलर्स हाइट वेट वॉइस इंटेलिजेंस ईटीसी सम ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स अमंग सम ऑफ योर स्टूडेंट्स आर वेरी गुड इन स्टडीज लाइक 3.9 सीजीपीए बट सम स्टूडेंट्स आर द 2 सीजीपीए बोथ आर द ह्यूमंस बोथ आर द स्टूडेंट्स बोथ आर टॉट बाय द सेम टीचर्स बट द मेंटालिटी लेवल इज डिफरेंट and that is known as variation why variation arises how variation arises why variation arises basically variation are arises when the changes in the gene structures take place changes in gene structures how gene structures change like here you have seen this This is the basically a nucleotide base pairings A A T C G 
C G T A C. But when this C change into the T, here the variation occurs. Like if the codon G T C, basically three set of codons pair and accumulate the one amino acid, like A A T, combine and make an amino acid. So far, C G T make an amino acid, G T A make an another amino acid. So when this C change into the T, which has happened due to the mutation, a sudden change in chromosome structures or a sudden change in the DNA sequences, the mutation take place, and this mutation leads to variation. As if this C G T produce a gene, a produce amino acid for the hair growth. If this CGC produce an amino acid which is responsible for the hair growth but when this C change into the T maybe this CGT amino acid code for another things like the six fingers in a human and that is the result of a mutation or the crossing over further reasons are then new combinations of genetic factors during crossing over like here is the structure of two homologous chromosomes this is the structure of a one chromosomes and this red one is another chromosomes both are crossing here the resultants they change their exchange their parts like here the green this get the red portion and the red get the green portion so here the dna is change and the changing of dna leads to ultimately variations Attendance roll out color. Text everyone. Obedo Rahman. Present, sir. Present. Sham. Present, sir. Present. Who is Ahmed Khan? Who is Ahmed Khan? Who is Ahmed Khan? Four double two. Ji sir. Nine students are present. If anyone left, I repeat the names. Obadur Rahman, Ahmed Khan, Bilal Ahmed, Fatima Sajawal, Malik Uzaifa, Nimra Sajawal, Rabil Fatima, Sheikh Muhammad Ijaz, and Zunair Arshad. Anyone left? Let's start.
so we have discussed that the how uh, why variation arises variation kyun aati hai two main reasons hain sabse pehli reason genes mein dna mein sequence mein kahin pe mutation ho gayi mutation different types ki ho sakti hai like different chemicals ke through ho sakti hai different rays ke through like x rays gamma rays and uh, some environmental issues like uh, when you are uh, uh it predicted in an environment adopt and goes into an environment where the extreme chemicals are present this will leads to mutation then there is the natural way which is known as the crossing over during gametes formation the crossing over take place in meiosis meiosis crossing over take place and uh, this will leads to the variation of the chromosomes so there is the history of genetics basically the ideas of the genetics is are related from time to time to explain the phenomena of inheritance basically there are the three types of theories which explain the history of genetics like the weppers and the fluid theories the preformation theories and the particulate theories so the first theory is vapor and the fluid theory in the vapor and the fluid theories the first theory was presented by the pythagoras in 500 bc they proposed that the every organ of the animal body gives out the some type of vapors these vapors unite and form a new individuals in 500 bc A scientist said that the every organ, like the foot, the hair, the hands, of animal body, gives some type of vapors. These vapors unite and form a new animal or the new offspring. Then Hippocrates, 400 B.C., they believed that the reproductive materials is handed over from all parts of body individuals, and the characters are directly handed over to the progeny. like uh, every and every part and the uh, every body parts is uh combine and these characters or the body parts combine and leads to the progeny this is the hippocrates theory which is uh, which is based as basically aristotle in 350 bc he said that the semen or the male sperm has the some vitalizing effect which considered the highly purified blood according to him mother furnish inert matter and the father gives motion to the new life like he said that mother makes a new offspring in his body but the semen or the sperm will gives some vitalizing power or the some magnificent powers to that restless body then the there is the another theory which is known as preformation theories leonardo 1452 to 1519 he proposed a theory that the male and the female parents contribute equally to the heredity of the offspring which is somehow a considerable theory Then the next scientist William Harvey in 1578 to 1657 he speculated that the all animals are arises from the eggs and semen this theory is same uh, from the previous theory like uh, the egg or the female speculated the animal structures while the sperm gives the power or the vitalizing roles for the life then leven hook 1632 to 1723 In 1677 he observed the sperms of different animals like the man the dog the other mammals like frog fish and named it as the amanuculus and also suggested their association with the eggs Theory of preformation Sommer dam in 
uh, he claimed that he was able to see the miniature figures of human homunculus in the sperm theory of preformation preformation mean formation se pehle like ke ek offsprings ke banne se pehle the us offspring ki ek pictures ek body sperm mein present hoti hai that is the theory of summer dam summer dam basically a scientist which uh, present the theory of preformation and according to this theory he said that before the pregnancy before the pregnancy a pictures of the human is present in the man sperm so he claimed this man uh, this sperm name as the humanculus this is like the structures of humanculus you have same scientists speculated that saw little man humanculus in the sperm like this one he said that this is the face the ha hands and the legs this whole structure is of the sperm sperm structures in which this is the picture of the human head hands and legs then bonnet is another scientist 1720 to 1793 he suggest uh, he said that the difference slightly from summer dan he believed in egg rather than the sperm he gave us the egg encapsulation of the box theory his theory is same like the summer dam like the summer dam said that the structure of a human is present in sperm while this bonnet said that the structures of the human is present in the egg k f wolf in 1738 to 1794 he said he presented the theory of epigenesis He studied the reproductive cell under improved microscope. He observed that the nothing like manculus. Instead, they observed that the cell was the composed of structural as fluid. The pattern of development was both amazing. Basically, he is the scientist which rejected the theory of preformation or the theory of uh, Swammer Dam by observing the cell under the microscope. He said that the cell is just a structure as fluid, and male and the female contribute equal part to the offspring then the third theory third type of theories are the particulate theories basically this is the era in which the genetics play a great role and the scientists play a great role like the first one is the lamarck lamarck present the inheritance of acquired characters according to lamarck in 1744 to 1829 He said that in 1844 there is the inheritance of acquired character is present among the living character, but he failed to provide the some evidences in the support of his concept. So his theory is rejected. According to his theory, he said that the giraffe has the long necks. Why giraffe has long necks? He said that the when uh, uh, with the, the passage of time, giraffes need to eat the leaves from the top of the trees. So far, he scratches necks. upward and his eggs was the long like he said that he said and he, he present another example like the snake is according to the lamarck snake has the feet around his body but of uh, he will uh, he can't use their feet so far his feet was vanished uske feet khatam ho gaye uska matlab tha like giraffe ki pehle bahut lambi gardan kyun hai पहले उसकी छोटी गर्दन होती थी जराफ ने क्या किया कि दरख्तों के ऊपर के पत्ते खाने स्टार्ट कर दिए जिसकी वजह से जराफ की गर्दन लंबी हो गई देन सेकंड उसने पेश किया कि जो स्नेक जो सांप होते हैं उनके पहले पांव होते थे लेकिन उन्होंने अपने पांव का यूज छोड़ दिया वो रींगते ही रहते थे जिसकी वजह से वक्त के साथ साथ उनके पाँव खत्म हो गए इन द एर ऑफ टाइम नॉट विद इन दन ईयर और टू ईयर इट्स टेक अबाउट हंड्रेड ईयर्स Then this is the theory of pangenesis. This theory was presented by the Charles Darwin in 1868. He gave the theory pangenesis. According to his theory, he take that each animal body part produce the minute particles known as gemmules, which are the firstly collected in the blood and then concentrated into the reproductive organ. When the animal reproduces into the new individual. these gemmules pass on to it and it has the blending of the both parents according to charles darwin or the pan genesis theory he said that the each each organ of the body produce some particulates minute particles 
small size particles which in term as the gemmules these are collected in the blood cell and these are remain in blood cells until the uh, until the animals can't produce a new one individual when animal want to produce a new individual these minute particles combine into the new individuals and the animal lead to a new offspring then there is the theory of germ plasm uh, this theory was uh, uh, basically wise man and a garden with the two scientist uh, this uh, basically uh, this disapproved the theory of pan genesis and wise man in 19, 1892 postulated the theory of germ plasm again basically wise man and galton are the two scientists which disapproved the uh, theory of charles darwin and then they pretend uh, uh, present a new theory which known as the theory of germ plasm basically what is this theory according to the wise man this theory explained that the, there in human in the organism there are the two types of the cell somatic cells and the reproductive cell somatic cell makes up the body and its various organ while the reproductive cell form the sperm and the ova he perform an experiment on the mice he takes the uh, uh, two mice and cut the tail of the mice this is the female and this is the male this is the sign of female and this is the sign of male and that's very important regarding the numerical problems keep remember this so he cut off the tail of mice like this both male and female up to 19 generations but in 20 generation the mice still has this tail so i conclude that the somatic cell is different from the germ cell like the germ cell are code for each and every organ of the human body so when we cut off the somatic cell this is basically a somatic cells but his the information in dna is the germ cell which is present on the last chromosomes so he cut this tail up to 19 generation but in 20 generation the mice still have the tail so far he concluded that the germ cell is different from the autosome cell this is the basically uh, now we start the post mendelian history of the genetics first one is the charles darwin as you all know charles darwin basically proposed the theory branching pattern of evolution resulting from the process known as the natural selection he said that the life is evolved from time to time like uh, life is changed from time to time as we believe that we humans are originated from the monkeys that is the basically example of charles darwin gregor mendel this is the most important scientist in the history of genetics basically this is the founder of genetics or the father of the genetics he basically published the result he published the result of investigation of inheritance in the term of the factors not the gene or allele because he did not know about the gene and allele he proposed the two laws of inheritance law of segregation and law of independent assortment uh, in some cases uh, we have mentioned the two laws and in some case we have mentioned the three laws basically these two laws law of segregation and law of independent assortment are most important then mendel uh, when mendel uh, uh, performed the experiment on the pea plant it in 66 he can't know the terms about the genes and allele so far his work is not published unpublished work but hogger devaris karl korens and track von these are the three scientists which rediscovered the mendel work in 1900 after the 32 years they basically work on the plants hybrid and came to the same inclusion of inheritance as the mendel said like the mendel basically gave the two laws law of segregation law of independent assortment which we studied in detail in future lectures Walter Soden and the Theodor Boveri these are the two scientists 
which basically studying the C origin and propose the chromosomal theory of heredity. William Batson was uh, another scientist which coined the term genetics, allele, homozygous, and the heterozygous terms. This is the Morgan, Thomas Hunt Morgan. In 1910, he discovered that the how genes are transmitted by the chromosomes. He basically worked on the sex linkage in the Drosophila. Friedrich Grip was in 1928. This scientist worked in a tra on the transformation in bacteria. And he worked on the two strain in the Streptococcus S30 uh, rough strain and smooth strain. In rough strain, this is the standard while this is the virulent. When he inject this, the mouse remain live. But when he this Virulent strain injected in the mice mouse uh, mouse mouse dies. Then heat killed smooth strain mouse remain alive and heat killed strains the mouse die. While another R strain which was not virulent it cannot cause the pneumonia in the mice. He first studied the chromosomes in 1951 and show by the X-ray crystallography that the DNA exists at the two strand bound together of the spiral helical structures. Basically, this Rosalind Franklin is the scientist which present that the DNA at the two strand. Like this is one and this is two which are in a zigzag manner and lagging on the each other in helical shape. Martha Chase and Alfred Hershey, these are the two scientists in 1952 used the phages 35S DNA and 32 for the final proof of the DNA in the molecule of the heredity. Tick and Watson present the two three-dimensional structure of DNA model and the DNA is a double helical structure. These are the basically two most famous scientists for the these are also the basis of the genetics because the genetics is no without a DNA and these two scientists tell us the structure of the DNA how DNA is look like like the adenine where adenine present and how adenine bound with the governing or thiamine and how governing bound with the cytosine. This is the Albert Levin and Johan Tijo. They basically studied the diploid chromosome number of the. They show that the human had the 46 chromosomes. Among these 46, 44 are the autosomes and the two are the sex chromosomes. This Kornberg basically 1958 he purified the DNA first time purified the DNA E. coli in the test tube and his work in DNA synthesis leads to the recombinant DNA and the genetic engineering. Basically Kornberg synthesized that our DNA in tube and among after this synthesizing basically we start the recombinant DNA technology and the genetic engineering. As you all know, recombinant DNA technology is basically we have changed the DNA, like we insert the some required sequence in the DNA and cut off the 
some sequence and in, insert the our required sequence that is known as the genetic engineering Gobind Khurana and Marshall Nirenberg in the 1966 they lead the team that cracked the genetic code basically there are as uh, i also show that there are three basically codons which code for a single amino acid and this tell us about which three codon code for a which amino acid and how these codon basically combine with each other and code for a single nucleic acid Stanley Cohen and Herbert in 1972 they invent the recombinant DNA technology how we recombine our DNA how we change our DNA and how we insert our required gene in the specific plant or the animals Joseph Sambrock in 1973 he led to the team at Cold Spring basically he purified that the DNA electrophoresis by using the agarose gel and staining with ethidium bromide basically this is the agarose gel in this here is the dna sample 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 we have load in these are the wells basically in well we have load this the dna samples and this dna sample run towards direction this when these dna samples are run towards this they are separated on the basis of their thickness on their length the larger dna parts stick here while the smaller one moves far away basically this technology is used for the separation of the dna on the basis of their length on the basis of the thickness ke how thick our dna is when we want to test our dna thickness how much dna we separated from or the plant cell then we check in this in this techniques which is known as the agarose gel electrophoresis agarose gel after this gel we have after this gel running which is almost 1 hour or 1 hour 15 minute depend on your voltage depend on your dna size we have visualized this gel with the rays technology in the electrophoresis system machine gel electrophoresis camera so that is the end of history of genetics which is most important and uh, here is some terminology genetic terminologies like the true breeding what is true breeding what is gene what is allele what is mutation autosome sex chromosomes genome hybridization gamete haploid diploid uh, crossover synapses disjunction genotype phenotype dominant allele recessive allele homozygous heterozygous carrier parent generation filial generation hybrids and dihybrid cross mono hybrid this term basically you have a uh, clarify from notes i'd send you the detailed notes of these terms definition just so that's all for today if you have any question regarding history please ask ये प्रोजेनी प्रोजेनी को एक दफा डिस्कस कर दें क्या होता है ये समझ में नहीं आया कुछ भी इसके बारे में प्रोजेनी बेसिकली ऑफ स्प्रिंग्स को कहते हैं चिल्ड्रंस को कहते हैं सर ये ये किसी तरीके से मतलब है उस किसी भी चीज का मतलब कोई भी एनिमल ऑफ स्प्रिंग है या कोई भी मतलब हां जी हैबिट चेंज की जा सकती है उसको एनवायरमेंट चेंज करके बेसिकली आपका जो एनवायरमेंट एक अगर देखिए बहुत सी थ्योरीज हैं और समटाइम्स एनवायरमेंट्स के थ्रू आप जेनेटिकली चेंज हो भी जाता है मॉडिफिकेशन अगर तो वो जो आपका एनवायरमेंट है वो उसकी जीन्स पे अफेक्ट करे तो 
लाइक एक एग्जाम्पल अब आपको मैं कैसे समझाऊँ एक तो ऑनलाइन क्लासेस में यही तो मसला होता है बेसिकली ये होता है कि अगर तो वो जो आपका इन्वायरमेंट है वो उसकी जीन्स पे अफेक्ट कर रहा है तो आप उसको चेंज कर सकते हैं लाइक like के अगर आप अफ साउथ अफ्रीका के लोग ब्लैक क्यों होते हैं क्योंकि वहाँ पे सन टेम्परेचर ज़्यादा होता है वहाँ पे सन टेम्परेचर बहुत ज़्यादा होता है उनकी जेनेटिक्स अब उसके अकॉर्डिंगली अडॉप्ट हो गई है अगर हम साउथ अफ्रीकन को पाकिस्तान में लेके आ जाते हैं पाकिस्तान में वो जितना भी अरसर हैं और वो आपस में मीटिंग करें और जो उनके ऑफ स्प्रिंग्स होंगे वो हमेशा ब्लैक ही पैदा होंगे क्योंकि उनकी जेनेटिक्स चेंज हो चुकी है उनके इन्वायरमेंट के मुताबिक रैदर देन के हम उनको ऐसा इन्वायरमेंट दें कंटिन्यूस एंड आलमोस्ट फिफ्टी ईयर्स मिनिमम फिफ्टी ईयर्स देन मे बी द जीन्स विच आर कंट्रोलिंग देर कलर मे बी चेंज बट वेरी फ्यू केस इन वेरी वेरी फ्यू केस लाइक इफ यू आर गोइंग इन एन एक्स रेज रूम दीज रेज आर द इन्वायरमेंट बेसिकली बट दीज रेज अफेक्ट ऑन यूर जीन्स सो वेन दैन यूर प्रोजनी कम्स दैट इज ऑबियसली वेरियंट फ्राम यू ये जो गोवन और हैं 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 या हैं हैं बारे में कुछ बताते ये ये नाइट्रोजनस बेसेस होती है बेसिकली न्यूक्लियोटाइड और न्यूक्लियोसाइड वो बेसिकली एक अलग चीज है ये ये जो चार है ना ये जो चार है बेसिकली पांच होती है एडिनिन थायमीन गवनिन साइटोसिन और यूरासेल ठीक हो गया ये पांच होती हैं नाइट्रोजनस बेसिस होती हैं इन नाइट्रोजनस बेसिस की पेरिंग से डीएनए का स्ट्रक्चर बनता है ठीक हो गया और जो तीन तीन नाइट्रोजनस बेसिस बेसिकली मिल के एक अमाइनो एसिड्स बनाती हैं लाइक एडिनिन है यूरासेल है और गवनिन है फर्ज करें ए यू जी ठीक है ये एक ए यू जी बेसिकली क्या है एक कोडान है अब इसने एक अमाइनो एसिड को कोड करना है लियोसिन को कोड कर रहा है या स्टाप कोडान है अब बेसिकली होता है ऐसे है कि ये जो अमाइनो एसिड होते हैं ना ये अब डीएनए हमारे पास है डीएनए डीएनए पे नाइट्रोजनस बेसिस प्रेजेंट होती हैं ठीक हो गया अब उस नाइट्रोजनस बेस उन तीन तीन नाइट्रोजनस बेस के पेरिस पेरिंग से वहां पे अमाइनो एसिड बनते रहते हैं वो माइनो एसिड्स आपस में मिलके एक चेन बनाते हैं वो जो माइनो एसिड्स की चेन होती है वो जब ये बेसिकली ट्रांसक्रिप्शन कहलाता है उन माइनो एसिड्स का बनना अकॉर्डिंग टू आवर डीएनए। ट्रांसक्रिप्शन होने के बाद वो जो माइनो वो जो माइनो एसिड्स की चेन बन जाती है ना वो आती है हमारे साइटोप्लाजम में न्यूक्लियस से बाहर आ गई और साइटोप्लाजम में आ गई अब उस अमाइनो एसिड से क्या होना है उस अमाइनो एसिड के रिस्पेक्टिव वहां पे प्रोटीन ने पैदा होना है हमारे हर करेक्टर को एक प्रोटीन ही कंट्रोल करती है बेसिकली हमारे कोई भी इंफॉर्मेशन है हमारे जिसम की हमारे बॉडी में कोई भी इंफॉर्मेशन है वो इन द फॉर्म ऑफ प्रोटीन मूव होती है लाइक like हमने माइंड को अब मेरा हाथ किसी गर्म चीज पे टच हो गया तो जो मेरे हाथ में मौजूद जीन्स जो कोडांस होंगे जो सेल्स होंगे वो कोड करेंगे वो एक चेन बनाएंगे प्रोटीन्स की के जी माइंड को कहेंगे कि इनको कहें अपना हाथ पीछे पिकअप करें वो जो कोडांस की चेन होगी वो बेसिकली मेरे माइंड तक जाएगी फिर माइंड उसको रीड करेगा उसको ट्रांसलेट करेगा और देन उसको ट्रांसलेट करके वो हाथ को हम पीछे खेचेंगे मसल्स को भेजेगा जो भी मसल्स होंगे वो मेरा हाथ पीछे पुल आउट करेंगे बेसिकली ये फिनमना होता है कि डीएनए पे नाइट्रोजनस बेसिस होती हैं डीएनए बेसिकली नाइट्रोजनस बेसिस से मिलके बना होता है उन नाइट्रोजनस बेसिस ने किसी ना किसी अमाइनो एसिड को कोड करना होता है यही फर्क होता है कि अगर उन नाइट्रोजनस बेसिस में कोई म्यूटेशन हो गई है कोई नाइट्रोजनस बेस चेंज हो गई है फर्ज करें इन्वायरमेंट की वजह से चेंज हो गई है जो बहुत रेयर होता है लेकिन होता है इन्वायरमेंटल इफेक्ट होता है 
तो अब देखें वही बात है कि हम बेसिकली तीन तरह की होते हैं एक जीनोटाइप होते हैं एक फिनोटाइप होती है और एक इन्वायरमेंट होता है ये तीन फैक्टर होते हैं किसी भी एक इंडिविजुअल के पास जो एक जीनोटाइप है और एक वहां का जो इन्वायरमेंट है उन दोनों ने मिल के हमारी फिनोटाइप बनानी होती है फर्ज करें मेरे जीन्स में हाइट की जीन्स है कि मेरी हाइट सिक्स फीट होनी है ठीक हो गया लेकिन मैं एक ऐसे इन्वायरमेंट में रहता हूँ एक ऐसे इन्वायरमेंट में रहता हूँ जिसमें जो रूफ है जो छत है उसकी हाइट ही छह फीट नहीं है उसकी हाइट ही पांच फुट है तो मेरा कद कभी भी छह फुट नहीं होगा मैं फिजिकली पांच फीट ही रहूंगा हालांकि मेरी जेनेटिक्स में है कि मैं सिक्स फीट अपनी हाइट रख सकता हूं लेकिन मेरे पास वो इन्वायरमेंट नहीं है जिसमें मैं सिक्स फीट को पैदा करूं सो so फार ये होगा कि आगे जो मेरी प्रोजनी आएगी उसमें में भी उसमें किसी को इन्वायरमेंट ऐसा मिल जाए कि वो सिक्स फीट की जगह उसको अवेलेबल हो तो उसकी हाइट सिक्स फीट हो जाएगी जी सर ये जो कोडान, की एंटी कोडान्स होती हैं इनके अलील्स बनते हैं नहीं अलील तो बेसिकली जीन्स की ही है अल्टरनेट फॉर्म ये जो तीन नाइट्रोजन स्पेसेस मिलकर कोडान बनाती है ना अब ए यू जी कोडान है अब इसके अगेंस्ट आके एंटीकुडान आके अटैच होता है जो अमाइनो एसिड्स होते हैं ना उनके नीचे एंटीकुडान अटैच हुए हुए होते हैं वो अमाइनो एसिड अपने रिस्पेक्टिव कुडान पे आके अटैच होता है कुडान एंटीकुडान का पेरिंग होती है ये बेसिकली हम आगे शायद लास्ट लेक्चर में डिस्कस करेंगे हम ट्रांसक्रिप्शन ट्रांसलेशन को तो उसमें यह आपको बात मजीद क्लियर हो जाएगी कि वो कैसे कुडान एंटीकुडान आपस में आके अटैच होते हैं वेट मैं फिर भी अगर कोई मेरे पास वीडियो पड़ी है तो मैं आपको भी वीडियो से क्लियर करता हूं अगर तो अवेलेबल है This is a production funded by viewers like you. फिलहाल तो वीडियो नहीं पड़ी तो फिर मैं आपको नेक्स्ट लेक्चर में वीडियो दिखाऊंगा ओके सर जी सही है वो वीडियो बहुत अच्छी बनी हुई है वो भी मिल नहीं रही मुझे मैं उसको ढूंढूंगा तो मैं आपको वो वीडियो दिखाऊंगा तो आपको क्लियर हो जाएगा कि कुडान एंटी कुडान का बेसिकली चक्कर क्या होता है जी थैंक यू सर सर वो आप वीडियो जो है वो आप व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप में सेंड कर दीजिएगा काइंडली प्लीज क्या चीज स्टेप्स ऑफ द ट्रांसलेशन प्रोसेस इनिशिएशन द स्मॉल वाइब इंशाल्लाह शेयर कर दी जाएगी थैंक यू सर आपको स्क्रीन शो हो रही है यस सर सेट दिस वीडियो स्टेप्स ऑफ द ट्रांसलेशन प्रोसेस इनिशिएशन The small ribosomal subunit binds to the initiator tRNA carrying the initiator amino acid methionine. This complex then attaches to the cap structure at the 5' prime end of an mRNA and scans for the start codon AUG. This is basically the, the process is mediated by several initiation start. factors. At the start codon 
The large ribosomal subunit joins the complex and all initiation factors are released. The ribosome has three sites. The A site is the entry site for new tRNA charged with amino acid or amino acyl tRNA. The P site is occupied by peptidyl tRNA, the tRNA that carries the growing polypeptide chain. The E site is the exit site for the tRNA after it is done delivering the amino acid. The initiator tRNA is positioned in the P site. Elongation. A new tRNA carrying an amino acid enters the A site of the ribosome. This On the ribosome, now the anti-codon of the incoming tRNA is matched this against is the mRNA codon positioned in the A site. During this proofreading, tRNA with incorrect anticodons are rejected and replaced by new tRNA that are again checked. When the right amino acyl tRNA enters the A site, a peptide bond is made between the two now adjacent amino acids. This is basically messenger RNA. And in As messenger, the there is no thiamine. Is thiamine is replaced the tRNA in the, in the P site releases the amino acids now this onto amino the tRNA acid attached with the this A site. One and becomes and empty exit from here. at the same time. The ribosome moves one triplet forward on the mRNA. As a result, the empty tRNA is now in the E site and the peptidyl tRNA is in the P site. The A site is now unoccupied and is ready to accept a new tRNA. The cycle is repeated for each codon on the mRNA. Here the cycle is started and then end. This is basically stop Uda. Termination. Termination happens when one of the three stop codons is positioned in the this A site. No tRNA the can protein. fit in the A site at that point as there are no tRNA that match that sequence. Instead, these codons are recognized by a protein a release oh, factor. Like Binding of the release factor catalyzes the cleavage of the bond between the polypeptide and the tRNA. The polypeptide is released from the ribosome. The ribosome is disassociated into subunits and is ready for a new round of translation. Methionine, phenine, glycine, leucine, alene, thrine. These are the basically amino acid chains. understand